Welcome everyone. I'll go ahead and get started now. I can see people are still logging on, but thank you so much for joining me tonight for immune, immune boosting superfoods and supplements. And I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I know you guys all have probably busy, busy evenings and I appreciate you guys logging on. As I mentioned, I am going to answer some questions near the end. So please feel free to type in the chat any questions that you may have. Just before we get started, a little bit about me. I just wanted to thank Healthy Planet first for having me. And my name is Jolene Gruber. I've been a nutritionist for almost 20 years, which is crazy. I can't believe it's been that long. Um, I will speak tonight on immune boosting superfoods and supplements, as I mentioned. And I think it's a great time of year to be focusing on immune builders and boosters because everyone seems to be you know getting back at it we're all excited some people are traveling i personally have kids i have two boys they're 14 and 16 they're super happy to be back in school they're playing high school sports they're back at the rep hockey we're actually going away this weekend to a hockey tournament and they couldn't be more excited so people are really looking to boost their immune system and stay healthy i know usually before hockey tournaments i'm focusing on snacks and lunches but i find this time around i'm really pushing the immune builders and boosters just to keep everyone in my house healthy. So I'm looking at ways naturally with our foods and I'm topping up with some supplements. And I think everyone's sort of on the same page with that. So um, a little bit about me, as I mentioned, I have two boys that are teenagers, they're 14 and 16. So I'm a mom and I'm a wife and uh, I'm a, a soccer player as well. I love sports and played my whole life. So sports nutrition is really a, a passion of mine as well. But um, I, like I said, I find that uh, most people today are looking towards, you know, how can I boost my immune system? What are you taking? They are the questions that I'm getting for staying healthy. So whether or not people are looking to travel or just stay home and um, get together more with friends, we're going to dive in and talk about how we can improve our immune system and how we can incorporate things naturally and supplement wise daily to, to stay healthy. So any questions, like I mentioned, feel free to put them in the chat. And uh, just an interesting statement I wanted to share about immunity before we get started is that immunity T cells are specialized immune system cells that are just waiting in your body and they're just waiting for activation. So, sorry, I've got a little question here and I will get to it in just one moment. If you can just type it in the chat box, that would be great. So um, those cells are just waiting for activation. So when you laugh, you activate T cells immediately and you begin to fight sickness. So next time you feel a cold coming on, just add laughing to your illness prevention plan. Uh, I hope I can make you guys laugh a little bit tonight. This is meant to be educational, but also fun. So as I mentioned, any questions, write in the chat box and um, you know, please participate as much as possible and I'll be sure to get to your questions at the end. So immune boosting superfoods and supplements. Uh, I'm gonna go over some um, immune superfoods like bone broth. I'm gonna talk about some zinc that is great for this time of year for colds, even other ways you can use it for your skin. Vitamin C has been long known as a great immune builder and booster. So we'll go over some ways we can boost with immunity and instant C. We're gonna talk about ways we can fight our sore throats as well as oral inflammation. Um, I know a lot of people are complaining about different oral inflammations lately because a lot of times, you know, different bacteria and stuff get in there and we can get different canker sores and cold sores. Quercetin with bromelain as well as um, vitamin D, the sunshine vitamin is super important right now. So we're gonna go over lots of ways uh, we can build our, our immune system and boost it as well. So first off, why do we need to support our immune system? A healthy immune system protects us first by creating a barrier that stops those invaders from entering our body. As if, you know, if one slips by the barrier, the immune system produces white blood cells and other chemical proteins that attack and destroy the foreign substances. So that's kind of a definition in the nutshell, but think about our tonsils. So I know so many children today that have gotten their tonsils removed because they are continually getting tonsillitis. I read many years ago in a book and it stuck with me. It said, taking out tonsils is like ripping out a ringing fire alarm 
instead of tending to the fire. And that really stuck with me because it made so much sense. Our tonsils are our first line of defense for our immune system. It filters bacteria and so many different things. So wouldn't it make sense to get to the root of it and build our immune system? If we're constantly getting sick, we may need some support nutritionally and supplement wise to boost our immune system. And I never forgot that quote. I've shared it so many times and I just love it. Um, you know, it's like ripping out a ringing fire alarm instead of tending to the fire. That's really getting to the root of things. And I just love that a philosophy as a holistic nutritionist. That's what we do. We, we constantly ask why, <laughs> but why we always want to get to the root of it. So, um, you know, there's so many things, you know, that, you can get to the root of and ask questions about, but the immune system, if someone is continually getting sick or can, you know, we all have those friends that are constantly, you know, running to the get together or the potluck and they're on antibiotics. They've got a, you know, a runny nose, you know, inflammation, and they're just always, always sick. You know, they may be stressed out. They may have a busy job, which contributes to weakening the immune system. So there's many ways that um, we can build and boost our immune system, but, you know, the type and the amounts of sugar that we're consuming also becomes um, a burden on our immune system as well, because for every tablespoon of sugar we consume, it depletes our immune system for three to four hours. So I know you probably notice, you know, a lot of kids at school and a lot of adults, even after Halloween, Christmas, Easter, people are just getting colds and they're getting sick because they're consuming so much sugar. So it's really important to look at the amount of sugar we're consuming, not only for our immune system, but for our health as well. And I'll dive into some of that as well in a few moments. Speaking of sugar, does it really suppress your immune system? So studies have shown spikes in sugar intake suppress your immune system. When your immune system is compromised, you are more likely to get sick. I know personally, I'm because we're going away to a hockey tournament this weekend. I keep telling my kids water, just drink water, you know, don't have any sugary drinks because I want you to stay healthy. And if you eat lots of foods and beverages that are high in sugar or refined carbohydrates, like those breads, pastas, all those foods that are man-made, basically, um, they're very processed, they're high in sugar. So refined carbohydrates, the body um, will process them as sugar. So you may be reducing your body's ability to ward off sicknesses and disease if you're consuming a lot of sugar. So eliminating drinks with sugar is a great tip. I've been sharing that um, for many, many years. I know um, swapping out is a good tip that I always give. If you just look at your drinks that you consume in a day, if you can swap them out for water, that is amazing. I'm not telling you to take away your morning coffee or your morning tea, that's fine. But most people consume a lot of sugar just in their drinks throughout the day. So if you swap your drinks for water, and I have some great ways that you can flavor your water that are sugar-free and immune building that I will talk about shortly, but just swapping it with water is a great kind of challenge to give yourself for the month of November or maybe until Christmas and see how you do. So getting back to the coffee. Now you don't have to swap out your coffee. I just want you to be aware that coffee can be dehydrating a couple cups a day people can handle, but if you're getting a lot of coffee, then it's very dehydrating and look at the sugar in the coffee. So I'll share a little story of a friend of mine that wanted to, you know, eliminate some sugar and get healthy. So I said to her, you know, swap all your drinks with water, but keep your double, double Tim Hortons coffee in the morning. So she did that. She loved it. And slowly as the weeks went on, she was actually detoxifying and getting rid of a lot of that sugar. So her blood sugar was regulating and she started to notice that her coffee started to taste really sweet. So I said, you know what, go down to a table, um, a tablespoon and a half instead of two tablespoons in your coffee. So she did that. I said, do that for another week. And then every week I'd take away a half a tablespoon until she was weaned off of sugar. And then she just had her coffee with cream. So as you know, cream is a high fat, which is fine. And uh, if people can tolerate the dairy, that's a great thing to stick with. So if you can try and eliminate the amount of sugar, you're really helping your immune system because sugar really depletes our immune system. You're also helping 
your blood sugar and probably your waistline because um, sugar really does um, contribute to that insulin meter around the middle. So um, a few tips for you for, um, you know, boosting your immune system naturally is to watch the sugar. So, so, sorry, some other ways too is, um, you know, to add some healing drinks um, instead of water like bone broth. So uh, bone broth has been around for centuries. It's one of those traditional nourishing beverages or ingredients that your grandmother's grandmother's grandmother has been doing. So I know myself, I love bone broth. Usually after Thanksgiving and Christmas, I will boil the bones of the turkey and that's how it's made. You boil them for 24 hours and all those nutrients and minerals, collagen from the turkey or the chicken or the beef, whatever you're boiling, get released into the broth. So that's why it's very nutritious. And again, it's made from boiling the connective tissues or the bones of the animals. Chefs use stock as a, as a base for soup. You can use it for sauces. I'm gonna talk about many ways you can use broth, but you can use it for gravies as well. Some people drink it on its own. So as I was mentioning about swapping out your sugary drinks, swap out that um, afternoon tea or coffee at around three o'clock, you know, when everyone at, you know, goes for the vending machines for a pop and a bag of chips because their blood sugar's low, swap it out for a bone broth at three o'clock and make a tea, a nice tea. You just add some hot water. Um, if you already have the broth, you just warm it up and you can add some sea salt, but um, it's a great on its own, but you can also incorporate it in foods, soups, sauces, and I'll talk about some ways you can do that as well. Uh, for me, I am not boiling bones every night. <laughs> I definitely do it after Thanksgiving and Christmas and I love making soup, but I don't do it every day. So there are many ways like Organica has a fabulous bone broth wine that is super clean and it's actually uh, boiled. The bones are boiled, like I mentioned, and then they're, um, they're powdered and dried. So you can actually benefit from it daily. So this is a great, it's rich in protein. It's rich in collagen, gelatin, glucosamine, hyaluronic acid, chondroitin, and all those key minerals like calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium, and phosphorus. So if you can imagine at Christmas time or Thanksgiving, if you've um, had a turkey and you've cut the turkey and then you leave the leftovers in the fridge, next day you take the turkey out and all the, the liquid that was around the turkey, it's now looks like jello, <laughs> right? Well, that jello is amazing because it's full of collagen and minerals. And usually when you heat it back up, it liquefies, but that is so nutritious. And sometimes people throw that away, they scoop it off, but don't keep it. It is so good and it's so nutritious. And basically all these nutrients are in our bone broth. We've just dried it so it can be used every day. And it is such a great way to incorporate it in your diet daily. So they're cage-free chickens for the chicken bone broth and they're fed, they're fed organic grain and no corner soy. The grass-fed pasture-raised cows are from Europe, so that's our, our beef broth. And of course, whenever you're using bone broth, you want to make sure it's non-GMO, hypoallergenic, antibiotic, and hormone-free, and tested for heavy metals and pesticides. So I love Organica products because they are Canadian and their sourcing is great. So you want to make sure you're, you know, you're looking for that and a really clean source when you're using the dried bone broth. So there, like I said, there's many ways to incorporate it. Um, you can drink it like a tea or a soup. You can swap it out in the afternoon and you can even make soups and stews. I do so many things with it now. It used to be sort of just a liquid thing I'd use um, for soups and stews and just as a tea, but now I've started sprinkling it on my veggies and stir fries just so my kids can get some extra nutrients. Uh, if they are um, having rice or quinoa, I'll throw two tablespoons of the chicken turmeric broth in the water and it turns it yellow. So my kids always call it yellow rice. <laughs> so it's very nutritious and uh, you can even throw it in so many different recipes. So I actually shared one of my family favorite recipes. It's a dairy-free butter chicken. Feel free to take a picture of this slide with your camera. I'll leave it up for a few minutes, a few seconds at least. But this is super nourishing. And I find that this time of year in you know the fall, winter, 
people are really craving those root vegetables and just those warming foods. It's sort of like a yin yang with the seasons. In the summer, our bodies are more craving those cooler foods like salads and smoothies and cooler drinks. And in the winter, it's like we're into the soups and the stews and the chilies and just the warming, you know, sometimes you just want a nice warm cup of broth or a cup of tea or a cup of coffee uh, to warm you up. So this butterfree dairy chicken is super easy to do. Now I have a crock pot at home that I can saute in, which is super handy, but if you don't, you can just do it this way. And you just basically saute the onion, the garlic, the ginger in a little bit of water, or you could do a little bit of ghee if you want to keep it dairy free. And then you add all your spices and you let it bloom. Now I add uh, a tablespoon of Organica's turmeric chicken broth. And that covers the turmeric and it's, it's spicy. So if you, if you like spice, you will love it. And it gives it a really good flavor. And then I put a can of full fat coconut milk and I want to stress the full fat. Don't go for the light because full fat is really good for sustaining us and keeping us fuller longer. And we need good fats, right? We want to eliminate the refined carbohydrates and the sugar. So a, a can of full fat um, coconut uh, milk is amazing. And then some uh, tomato paste and you just mix it all around and then you add your chicken breast and you can put it in the crock pot, uh, you know, for four to six hours and it is awesome. So uh, I hope you all got to, you know, you could add green peppers and, and look more at the ingredients. I'm just going, I know it off by heart because I've done it so many times, but um, it's just something I love to share because one, it's one of my favorite recipes and I, I use it all the time in the fall and the winter. So please try it out. But also it's a, another great way to use the turmeric bone broth, which is a super tasty. It's actually my favorite one. Now, because the turmeric bone broth is very spicy, you will love it. If you love spice, some people that, um, just like a little bit of spice prefer to maybe mix it with the regular chicken bone broth. So there's lots of things you can do, but if you love spice, you will love this one. So the bone broth benefits are really so beneficial. So it promotes it, you know, weight management because it keeps you fuller longer. And that's because there's 15 grams of protein. So people have, you know, way too much sugar. I'm going to talk about sugar a lot tonight because it depletes the immune system and really talking about immunity here. And really as North Americans, we need to really watch our insulin. And that is another webinar in itself. But, um, Tonight, I'm just going to focus on the immunity and um, with the bone broth, think of, you know, swapping things out. So your bone broth tea instead of, you know, a Coca-Cola in the afternoon. And because you're getting those 15 grams of protein, that's actually going to help uh, your weight management, because when we crave those sugary drinks, it adds uh, to weight gain. It supports gut health because bone broth is very rich in collagen. So bone broth, of course, I mentioned has minerals and collagen and collagen is very good at repairing the gut lining. And um, that's why it's really good for gut health. So any, anyone in general, but any IBS, ulcerative colitis, or anything like that can really benefit from the healing uh, benefits of the collagen in the broth. So it also helps to relieve respiratory tract infections. It supports joint health. So the bone broth has a type two collagen, which I will talk about in a moment. And it's really great for arthritis type uh, issues because that type two collagen is really good for the joints. It maintains psychological health. And I think that's because of the protein content. When we have low, um, when our insulin is all over the map and it's sort of on a roller coaster because we're consuming too much sugar, um, it doesn't affect, it affects our brain and our psychological health. So, you know, you know, food and mood is very connected. So the bone broth really keeps our blood sugar stable because you're adding that protein there, which is really important. It improves sport recovery. Again, the protein, the 15 grams of protein is awesome. Um, I had my youngest son, he just is coming off a broken hand. My other son had a broken arm a couple uh, years ago, and I was giving them lots of collagen and lots of bone broth just to help repair. So it's really good for sport recovery, especially after working out because of all the wear and tear and the tissues and the muscles. So it's very good for a whole body protein. So like I said, most of us don't usually get enough protein or good fats. We get way too many carbohydrates. So we want to make sure that we're getting enough protein per day. And these are great ways with the broths to sneak it in. 
just think of it as crowding out the junk, right? If you're sneaking in a, a bone broth tea here, you know, collagen here and some other good um, ingredients in your soups and your stews, you're not going to have room for any junk, which is a good thing. So I've talked a bit about the bone broth and how the bone broth has collagen, but what is the difference between collagen and bone broth? That question does come up quite a lot. And think of bone broth as an overall support for the body. So as I mentioned, you have those minerals in there, which are great for bones and teeth and developing. When my kids were toddlers, I gave them lukewarm bone broth in a sippy cup. And it was, they loved it. It was so nutritious. And if you know any toddlers out there that are drinking sippy cups, try and get them on bone broth. Um, of course, lukewarm, and it's just a great drink for them to have. And it's so rich in amino acids like glycine and glutamine. So um, very good amino acids. Uh, the minerals are calcium, magnesium, which are great for growing bones and teeth and everybody. Um, Magnesium, phosphorus, potassium, sodium, and zinc. Zinc is a great um, immune booster and builder. So you're also getting those joint friendly nutrients and the collagen. So um, think of bone broth as that overall tonic that has some collagen in there, some great minerals. And um, the, the, chicken the, the chicken bone broth has type two collagen. So it's amazing for your joints and you know, in your knees, any arthritis, it's amazing for digestive healing and it's great for immunity. I'm going to quickly talk about um, our veggie broth for the vegetarians in the crowd. Um, and then I'll go on to the collagen. So our veggie broth, if people um, avoid the beef or the chicken is a whole food nutrition from organic vegetables. So you're getting L-glutamine from the vegetables and L-glutamine is super healing for the gut. So any issues with the gut can really benefit from the veggie broth. Veggie broth tastes amazing. I'm personally not a vegetarian. I love and use all the broths because they're so yummy. There's four grams of vegan friendly protein in the veggie broth. So a little bit less um, in the veggie broth because um, it's a vegetarian, but you're getting an adaptogenic mushroom called tremella mushroom, which is very beneficial. It's very immune boosting. All mushrooms are very good for our immune system. They've been around for centuries. And tremella mushroom is one of those mushrooms that are pretty unique because they're very high source of hyaluronic acid as well. So hyaluronic acid is great for our synovial fluid in our joints. So again, good for joint health, but it's also really good because hyaluronic acid uh, binds moisture. So it keeps our skin moist and dewy, kind of like when we're in our twenties. <laughs> and uh, it's really good for just keeping that moisture in there. The veggie broth is low in sodium. It's super delicious because you have the tremella mushroom in there and the nutritional yeast. It's almost when you try it, it's very creamy because of the nutritional yeast and it just makes the flavor awesome. Like I, my kids sometimes will just make it with some rice noodles or just something so super simple. So instead of having like the ramen noodles that I kind of grew up on in university, but um, the, this one's a much healthier version. So it's super delicious. And again, you're getting the L-glutamine for gut health and you're getting 37 servings per bottle. Bottle, So it's vegan friendly, again, non-GMO, gluten-free, and they're, the ingredients are organic, which is fabulous. So those are the broths. And now the collagen um, that question comes up, how is the collagen different from the bone broth? So think of collagen as, you know, it comes from the skin of bovine or fish. So um, your collagen is a protein, which is isolated via a process called hydrolyzation. And hydrolyzation makes it more concentrated source of that nutrient. So with collagen, you're getting collagen. With the bone broth, you're getting so, some collagen, some minerals, and kind of an overall, um, you know, tonic of nutrients. But with the collagen, it's hydrolyzed, which means it's very absorbable, it's bioavailable, which means we absorb it very well in our bodies. So it can be hugely beneficial because you get much bigger doses of the collagen. So when my son broke his hand, he was having lots of collagen. I gave him the bone broth too, because we want to boost the immunity and all those minerals are great for bones too. Um, my husband, for instance, he has a sore knee just from many years of golf and other things. So he's taking collagen every day. I'm trying to give us all the bone broth sprinkled everywhere. So you can kind of do them both together, but just know that the collagen is a more concentrated source of that nutrient. So as we age, our collagen formation, in our body naturally decreases, unfortunately, by about 1% every year in our twenties and up to about 
50% by the time we hit 45. So that's me. <laughs> so I got to be taking it daily. So um, like poor lifestyle choices, smoking can further decrease the collagen formation. You've probably heard that vitamin C is very good for smokers and vitamin C I'll talk about as well is very good at helping build collagen. So if we're smoking or vaping, which is the new trend vaping, um, we're really depleting that vitamin C, which helps that, which does not help our body build our collagen. So, um, the, you know, the less collagen we have, the more chance we have of losing that elasticity in our skin and our hair may not be as great and our nails a little weaker, our strength and our tone throughout our whole body will suffer. So it can be noticed like fine lines and wrinkles, brittle nails, cellulite, weak ligaments, arthritis is a big one and different injuries that you can have as well. So there are over 27 types of collagen in the body. And I'm going to break down the most common types, which are type one, two, and three. Those questions come up a lot. And um, we do a lot of webinars just on collagen, but I'll kind of do it uh, quickly just so you can get the gist of it. So type one is hair, skin, and nails. So think about the exterior of our body. So hair, skin, and nails. Type two is our connective tissues. That's the joints, the ligaments, and the cartilage. Type three is the muscle fibers and organs like your liver, lungs, and kidneys. So marine collagen is from fish. It's sourced from cod and it's a type one and it's, it's sourced from the fish scales in the skin and bovine, um, which you can probably see from the picture there. It's a little cow at the, at the bottom of the container. Bovine is types one and three, and it's from the hides of cattle. So chicken is type two. And that's the sternum bones and cartilage. So you can see why type two bone broth is very good for arthritis and sort of those ligament and cartilage issues in our body, because that's where it comes from. And then of course the type one is, um, you know, hair, skin, and nails, which can benefit that area. So make sure you know exactly where the collagen is sourced from when you're buying it, because you just want to make sure it's super clean. Your collagen should not taste or smell. So I think it's, such a great way to add, you know, protein to the diet and all the benefits that collagen gives you. And it's just a more concentrated source. So you can definitely uh, do both bone broth and collagen. You know, which one should I take is always the question, but you don't necessarily have to choose one. So as you learn from the last few slides, they're slightly different, but bone broth is a fantastic general tonic to support your overall health. Like I said, my toddler's had the bone broth in a sippy cup. So great way for overall sort of nutrients to support your health. And it's also a good addition to wintertime. Throw it in your foods, your soup, your stews, your butter chicken, you have the recipe for now. And um, it's just great in so many different things. The collagen can also be used as a general tonic, but it shines when it's used for more specific concerns like, okay, um, I have some, you know, some issues with my joints or my ligaments or, you know, type one, my hair, I just had a baby, my hair's falling out. Um, my skin is really dry. My nails are really brittle. I'm going to try some marine collagen. So those specific areas that you want to support, um, if you, if you want to support your sore, sore joints and, you know, help a leaky gut or improve skin health, amino acids will be super helpful. So like I said, you don't have to choose just one. It's great to use both. For example, the ginger chicken bone broth tastes so great. And the enhanced collagen you can mix together in the evening as a great way to wind down before bed because there's no caffeine in there. It's very nourishing and you can mix them together. The collagen, the marine collagen and the enhanced collagen is flavorless and odorless. So you can put it in water, you can put it in coffee. It's fine to add to heated drinks like coffee. So, you know, you can do so many things with it and you just wanna kind of get it in there. Like I said, swap out, you know, I never say to people, no, you can't have that. Swap it out for this. So swap out your afternoon coffee for a bone broth tea. Okay, swap out your, double, double uh, sugar and cream in your coffee for maybe cream and enhanced collagen. And you can just try different ways to add it in there and uh, really get it in because they are so nourishing. 
So I did mention about zinc. Uh, zinc is such a fabulous um, prod product naturally or supplement wise. It's a, it's an essential trace mineral that's needed in our body. It's like, you don't really see severe zinc deficiencies and the recommended dietary allowance for men is just 11 milligrams per day and women it's eight milligrams per day. So sometimes you have questions come up about if you have too much zinc, can you deplete your copper? Well, you have to take a lot. So, um, you know, there's definitely so many good foods that contain zinc and it's really important uh, for many, many different issues. So wound healing, you know, I had a surgery at the end of the summer and I took lots of zinc because I wanted my stitches and everything to heal really quickly. Of course, it builds the immune system. Zinc is amazing uh, immune booster and builder. So if you get sick, you get a cold, take some zinc, it helps, helps uh, rid the cold faster. And if your immune system is weak, like you've been through a lot, you've had a stressful time in your life, zinc is great for building up that immune system as well. It helps the body make protein. It is great for acne and skin problems. So I have teenagers at home and sometimes, you know, they're getting little breakouts here and there I was noticing. So I got them some zinc and zinc is fabulous for teenage skin. If anyone has teenagers with some skin issues, take the zinc. It is so amazing and any skin problem really it helps with. And it's also great for the reproductive and prostate. It's a super antioxidant because our soils are very depleted today from all the farming practices. We are not getting a lot of zinc in our soil. So our food sources are very depleted and the food sources include seafood, beans, oysters, wheat germ, brewer's yeast, pumpkin seeds, and eggs. So those are all foods from mother nature. I love the saying mother nature gets it right. Human intervention gets it wrong. So just just love the way I'm going to repeat that mother nature gets it right. Human intervention gets it wrong. So nothing's been done to these foods. They're all fresh foods that are so nutritious. If you look at the pumpkin seeds, they're just raw pumpkin seeds. If you have a quarter cup of raw pumpkin seeds, you're getting 10 grams of protein. And that is just amazing. One thing that I love to do is lightly toast them. So I'll take the raw pumpkin seeds, just as you see there in the, in the picture, and I'll put them in a frying pan, no oil, no nothing. And I just toss them until they start to pop. And I'll do a lot of them. And then I'll keep them in a mason jar in the fridge. And they are so good just to snack on on their own or to add to salads. Like if I don't toast them and I throw them in salads, my, my family will be like, Oh, the pumpkin seeds aren't toasted. <laughs> so it's like, it makes a big difference in the taste. It just brings out the flavor. They are kind of bland on their own when they're raw, but really try just toasting them. No oil, no nothing just until they start to pop. And it is a fabulous source of protein. If you're looking to put things into kids lunches, this is a great idea. It's a seed. It's not a nut. So we can go in school lunches. Yay. <laughs> That's exciting. Um, and because it's such a great uh, source of protein. So vitamin C I mentioned uh, is a water soluble vitamin. It's also known as ascorbic acid and it's a great antioxidant. Everyone's probably known that because it's the most widely known vitamin in our modern world to decrease the severity of the cold. Hence, there's so many vitamin C supplements out there because it is such a great product. So I think the, the main thing you want to stay away from is the sugar, right? So when you're, if you're getting some vitamin C from your food, that's awesome. You know, oranges are wonderful. Um, all those orange and red fruits and vegetables are great sources of vitamin C. Even green leafy vegetables are good source of vitamin C as well. But if you're getting uh, supplements, you want just make sure there's no sugar uh, because that sort of depletes the purpose, right? You want to boost and build your immune system. If you have a cold, vitamin C is fabulous for getting rid of a cold. You know, they say a thousand milligrams of vitamin C is great. If I get a cold, I do what's called, called an ascorbic acid flush, which means I'll take about four to 6,000 vitamin C per day. You take it to bowel tolerance and then you knock it down one level. So I take about four to 5,000 a day if I have a cold coming on and it just flushes 
flushes the cold out of you quickly. And um, you just want to make sure there's no sugar if you're taking vitamin C supplements, because um, of course, sugar depletes your immune system and we, we don't want to do that. So um, vitamin C is just a great way to boost and build the immune system in a quick way. And there's so many great ways to have it, which I'll talk about as well. Um, it's extremely important for collagen. As I mentioned before, the skin elasticity, vitamin C helps build the collagen. So collagen is super important for skin and it's important for gums, bones, and teeth. It promotes better skin. So vitamin C has been long known. If anyone's had a supplement bottle of vitamin C, they call it a facelift in a bottle, right? Like I'm 45, soon to be 46. And I take vitamin C all the time because it's just so good for so many things. Like I said, your, your bones, your teeth, your skin, everything. So it's very good for iron absorption as well. So if anyone takes iron supplements, it's, iron supplements are more common in women, but um, if you're taking iron, you really wanna make sure you're taking a vitamin C as well, because vitamin C helps with the absorption of iron. It reduces the risk of gout. So this time of year, we're getting close to the holidays. You know, all the stores have the Christmas stuff out, uh, which is super exciting. My husband's already brought up our our couple of fake Christmas trees <laughs> that we need to put up, but um, you know, people are going to start, you know, indulging in some, some food and some drinks, and that's when the risk of gout goes up. So products like Goutrin are very fabulous to use throughout the holidays to prevent, you know, gout flare ups. But when you have enough vitamin C or you're taking vitamin C that actually lowers the amount of uric acid in your blood. And that's what causes a flare up for gout. So vitamin C with gout is, uh, or sorry, with gout trend is, is two great products, but just making sure you're getting enough vitamin C will help uh, reduce the risk of gout. Of course, it's an important um, and potent immune builder and booster. If you're taking the birth control pill as a female, you want to make sure you're taking lots of vitamin C because you use it up, especially smoking and vaping. It totally destroys your vitamin C. So if anyone smokes or vapes, you have to be taking a lot of vitamin C. And of course, um, the food sources, like I mentioned before, GLVs is green leafy vegetables, tomato, squash, cabbage, broccolis, you know, oranges, all those great lemons and limes are so high in vitamin C and just a great way to add it, whether you're juicing, I love people to, you know, eat the whole fruit and the whole vegetable because the fibers are there. So with the fiber acts like a scrub brush, it kind of goes along your intestine and scrubs your intestine. So you want to make sure I love to, if you're juicing, make sure you're getting all the, the pulp in there as well. Maybe it's a Vitamix that mixes it all together, but you want to make sure you're getting all those good fibers in there for, um, for your body. So, um, I'm just going to um, talk a little bit now about B propolis because we're talking about vitamin C and how it's a great immune builder and booster. And a lot of questions come up about B propolis. Um, I'm also going to talk about vitamin C. I mentioned earlier about uh, ways that you can uh, add vitamin C to your water. And I'm going to talk about that um, at the end as well. But B propolis is you know, a question that comes up all the time. People see it on the shelves sometimes in, in health food stores and they don't know what it is, but it's it, in nature, bees collect material from the bark and the leaves. Then they partially digest this mix in their mouth to form a resin called propolis. And it's used to maintenance their hives. So they, it goes along the inside of the hives and it works as an antimicrobial agent and it keeps this disease out of the hives in the colony. So it's you know, again, mother nature gets it right. <laughs> um, and why B propolis is great for immunity is because for us as humans, it provides a unique source of antioxidants, but it also is awesome at fighting sore throats, canker sores, and oral inflammations. So you can see in the picture here, this is a tincture. It's a liquid, which is super easy. We also have it in a spray. I love the spray. I keep it in my car, but it combats um, anything like viruses, bacteria, anything that creates a health challenges when left unchecked. So it's super easy to take for kids and for adults, even the elderly. So we have an alcohol-based and an alcohol-free form. The alcohol form is a little bit stronger, but there is the alcohol free form, which is great for children and elderly if they're sensitive to or anyone if they're sensitive to the alcohol. But um, it's great. The drops and the sprays are awesome because you, you know, you don't have to swallow um, pills or supplements because uh, some people struggle with that. So we do have them in uh, a capsule base, but um, you can take them in this liquid tincture or in the sprays, which is super handy. 
I'm going to move on to something called quercetin and bromelain. So this is another amazing product that is fabulous to take in combination. Uh, and Organica has this great blend of the quercetin. So it, they work synergistically together. So the quercetin is an antioxidant and it's found in plants and it's great for anti-inflammatory, antihistamine, anti viral properties is super. So um, any issues like that, antioxidant, anti-inflammatory and antihistamine and antiviral. So this time of year, antiviral is super important because people don't want to get sick, right? They're using it as preventative as well as, um, you know, uh, maintenance every day, which is great. So the bromelain part of it is uh, a naturally occurring enzyme that's found in the stem of pineapples. So it's actually like a digestive enzyme and um, it inhibits the inflammatory chemicals called prostaglandins. So the bromelain and the quercetin work together. The bromelain actually helps the quercetin and it approve and it Im improves that absorption of it. So bromelain has been shown to decrease inflammation in conditions such as arthritis and sinusitis as well, which is great for this time of year. But just note that the quercetin and the bromelain, they work together and uh, quercetin is great for so many things. As I said, antiviral this time of year, viruses, people don't want to get sick. So it's a fabulous product, but antihistamine is a big one too. Like quercetin is fabulous for allergies. I always recommend people start taking quercetin with bromelain, um, you know, five, six weeks before allergy season in the spring. So start taking it in March because of the antihistamine properties. So it's a great to start taking, you know, in, in Canada now, sometimes our, our springs come so quickly, right? It's like, we don't have spring. It's like winter and then it's summer. So I always say, just start it in March before the allergy seasons. And, um, it really helps if you get allergies because it uh, helps with the histamine and why it does that is, you know, usually if we have allergies, our immune system is, is a little bit weaker, right? So if you want to get to the root of allergies, you have to look at leaky gut. And what leaky gut is, it's basically when you're born and you look at a baby's intestine, it's semi-permeable, which means there's little holes in it. It's like a cheesecloth. And that's why you can't give babies certain foods um, because certain proteins could get into the bloodstream and then allergic reaction would occur. So that's why you're looking for redness around the mouth and different things when you introduce foods to baby. And that's because their immune system and their intestinal tract isn't fully developed. Well, as babies get older, their development uh, improves and that intestinal uh, lining uh, solidifies. Then as we get older and adults, because we are eating poorly and we're eating a lot of refined foods, and uh, we get these little fissures in our intestine. They're like little cuts and they're very microscopic. And some doctors may call it IBS. And uh, sometimes it gets worse and it's ulcerative colitis. But a lot of times when we have allergies, we have that leaky gut, which means we have those little fissures in our intestine. So our immune system is so busy trying to repair that gut lining that when allergens from the environment, like grass, pollen, and things like that come in, we suffer more. So really getting to the root of allergies is you want to clean up that leaky gut. That's where bone broths come in. That's where looking at your diet, maybe taking out some inflammatory foods, like maybe dairy and wheat are causing you some problems. So maybe you just want to swap it out for a trial period. It doesn't mean you can never have it. It just means while you're healing, you swap it out. Bone broths are so good. Collagens are so good for that gut lining and those nutrients in there to help. But, um, you could also do a very good morning elixir that I love. You just get a little bit of water, um, a little bit of aloe vera juice and not the juice that you would find, you know, that has sugar in it. It's a, in the supplement section of a health food store. So it's an aloe vera juice and it's all pure aloe vera. Think of it. It's more liquid, but it's like when you get a cut and you put aloe vera on your, on your skin, it helps to heal. So first thing in the morning on an empty stomach, you would put a little bit of water, aloe vera juice, some probiotic powder and liquid chlorophyll. And that, what that does is it kind of coats the um, gut lining and it's very healing. The probiotics of course are great for the gut as well, but that's really good for allergies. And if you do that daily, and then maybe you're, you know, a drink of bone broth, a tea first thing in the morning, and then slowly layer on your food as the day goes on, it's very, very healing for allergies. So in 
in March, you can take this quercetin and bromelain and it's very good uh, and antihistamine. So people find that every year their allergies get less and less and less. So of course you want to get to the root of it and you want to clean up or heal your leaky gut and quercetin and bromelain will definitely help alongside of that. But um, the, the main issue is healing the gut. So that's a couple tips that you can do to help with the allergies. How else can we support our immune system? So I've mentioned these uh, a couple times already. Uh, don't smoke, don't vape. <laughs> Seems like every high school kid is smoking and vaping. Like uh, I talk to my kids all the time, you know, have you vaped? Are you vaping? And he's like, everyone is mom. Like, no, we're not doing it. Like, but it's, it's crazy. So really, if you have kids, talk to them about how bad uh, smoking and vaping is and how much we need uh, vitamin C because it depletes our vitamin C. Eat a diet high in fruits and vegetables. Uh, those veggies, again, act like a scrub brush on our intestine. So they're very, very good. Exercise regularly and drink water. So some ways that you can drink more water. So my father-in-law, he's turning 88 this month. He's a fabulous, healthy man. And he hates drinking water. But over the years, he has this little water bottle and he drinks, he drinks it a day. And he's always said, I hate water. I hate it. How do you hate water? <laughs> you know, like it's water. It doesn't really taste, but, um, our instant C is a great way. They're little tabs. And, uh, I've got a picture that I'll show you, um, uh, at, uh, at the end, but they're great way. Cause there's zero sugar and you pop it in your water and, um, you're getting the benefits of a thousand milligrams of vitamin C. So he's been doing that. It's a great way to drink more water and it's a little flavorful peach, um, you know, peach mango or raspberry. And there are different ways that you can, you know, get a little bit of flavor and no sugar, but a thousand milligrams of vitamin C, but you mainly want to make sure you're not getting vitamin C, uh, sugar in these vitamin C, uh, drinks that you add to water. So maintain a healthy weight, cut down on sugar. I can't uh, talk enough about how much excess refined sugar is not great for our immune system or our insulin meter or muffin top around the middle. Get adequate sleep. Of course, if we're not sleeping, it's going to affect our immune system. Try to minimize stress um, in modern day health concerns, you know, like um, you know, people are working the day job and they come home, maybe they have kids, maybe they have a second job. They've got lots of things going on. You know, we're, we're really stressed out and we're kind of working the day shift and the night shift. So as much as we can try to minim minimize stress, sometimes it's hard. So, you know, topping up your tank with some vitamin C and some quercetin and some of these really good supplements is a way to kind of build and boost your immune system. Right. Um, in and help minimize the stress. So get enough vitamin D daily. Vitamin D is super, super important. That brings me to the next slide. So vitamin D is the sunshine vitamin. So it's called the sunshine vitamin because it's produced in your skin in response to sunlight. So we've been lucky here in Ontario because we've had a, you know, quite a few really beautiful days here and uh, we're going to be getting into some colder and darker days. And vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin, but what happens in the summertime is, you know, we're usually getting enough vitamin D. Um, and sometimes if we're out by a pool or, you know, if men have their shirts off or, um, you know, you're getting that exposure, the chest and the back is absorbing. That's a big surface area to absorb vitamin D in the summer, <clears throat> excuse me. And it's a great way, but in the, in the winter time, we're covered up right? Um, a lot of people wear sunscreen, even in the winter, because they want to prevent premature aging. So we're not getting that absorption of the vitamin D. So it's super important to supplement with vitamin D because, um, because our body produces it naturally from sun, but in the winter time, we're not getting it. So, um, there's certain foods that can, you know, give us some vitamin D, but, um, you want to make sure in the colder months when our body's covered up that we're supplementing with supplementing with it. So, um, you want to make sure that, um, you know, it's important and you're getting, you know, it used to be a thousand milligrams was the recommended daily amount, but, uh, I suggest people get tested. I get tested every year and you want to be about 150. So I got tested not too long ago and I was 144. So that's good. I'm continually to take my vitamin D every day, but, uh, vitamin D D deficiency is one of the root causes of several chronic, uh, conditions like heart disease, cancer, stroke, depression, osteoarthritis and more. So sunlight of course is the best source, but us Canadians were, you know, we're kind of at a loss because, um, we're, we're, we're not getting that 
amount of D in the in the fall and in this in the winter. So we want to make sure we're, you know, we're getting that throughout the winter through our supplementation. So um, I just want to go to the next slide and, and talk about how much you need. So like I said, the RDA used to be a thousand, they increased it to, I think, 2000 per day, which is great, but you may need more. You know, I encourage people to get checked. It costs about $35 to get your vitamin D checked. And it's really good to know where you're at. People that live close to the equator get approximately 3000 IU per day, just naturally. And we don't live close to the equator. So I personally take three to 5,000 per day at this time of year, but I know where my vitamin D is at. So I would recommend getting your vitamin D checked through a blood test and you'll know where you're at. So, uh, between 70 to 90% of North Americans don't get enough vitamin D. So you really, I mean, we used to get our vitamin D covered and we didn't have to pay for it, but it's one of those small things that are so important that if you can afford the $35 once a year, I really encourage people to get it tested and know where they're at because uh, you may need 10,000 milligrams per day. So um, it's really important. Now, I just wanted to jump back to um, this picture here. If you look at the first picture of the vitamin C, the blue little tubes there. I was talking about water and uh, vitamin C. So this is what I have my father-in-law on the instant C and they come in raspberry and peach mango and they taste awesome. There is zero sugar and it's just a great way to flavor your water. If you don't like water, um, you can add it, but even if you like water, so my kids love these, they actually put it in soda water <laughs> because I tell, you know, sometimes I crack down on them. I don't know what they're drinking when they're out with their friends, probably pop and, and junk, but at least at home I can um, monitor it, but they really love it. And it's a great way to get that a thousand milligrams of vitamin C and there's no sugar. So the exciting thing is, um, you know, these are all super clean Canadian products. And I really hope you have a good understanding of the different ways we can build and boost our immune system naturally, of course, through food and with supplementation, because of course there are, um, you know, with our diets today, we sometimes need to top up with supplements, especially ones like vitamin D and vitamin C. And today people work hard, you know, we, like I said, often work the day shift and then come home and work the night shift and we're running around and our commitments make our lives very stressful. So that's why I love these supplements to help build and boost our immune system. So for the rest of November, I'm super excited because Healthy Planet has all the Organica immunity products, 20% off for the whole month of November. So um, it, it's fabulous that, um, you know, we can get these products and, uh, and you know, any questions, I know the Healthy Planet staff will be super uh, happy to help you guys, but um, these are great products and a great way to just sort of, like I said, slide them in, swap them out for some maybe not so healthy ingredients or foods you've been having, and just a way to sort of top up your tank and your immune system. So thank you all so much for joining me, man. That went really quick. And um, I'm gonna stay on and I'm gonna look at the chat. I have quite a few questions here. So I'm just going to go through for those of you that have to leave. I appreciate you joining me for this time and uh, I hope you have a great night and I hope to see you guys again. I'll go ahead and start looking at the questions now. Okay, so great question here. The question is, if you drink herbal teas with raw honey, does it count as water or not? Unfortunately, not sorry, herbal tea does count as, wa as water and water counts as water, but that's it. Ah, I lied. Lemon and water also counts as water, but herbal teas do. But if you add the honey, it does not count as water, unfortunately. So um, next question, does it, oh, does it have to boil for 24 hours? Okay, so if you're making your bone broth yourself, um, 24 hours, it doesn't absolutely have to be 24 hours, but if you add a little bit of apple cider vinegar that, to the water when you're boiling bones, it actually helps draw the minerals and everything out. So you could do it a little bit, um, not, not as long. So uh, I've definitely done that before. Cause I, you know, I had to leave the house or something and you didn't wanna leave the stove top on. You could definitely um, do that. Next question, does phosphorus deplete your bones of calcium? So phosphorus is um, a, a great mineral, so is calcium. You know, if you're having way too much phosphorus, usually like in the bone broths and stuff, it's all balanced and stuff. If someone was just taking like phosphorus on its own, sometimes it does, but you would have to take um, a significant amount. 
ghee is not dairy free. So that was a comment. So ghee is clarified butter. And that is a good point. Um, it's kind of controversial. Sometimes people say it's dairy free. Sometimes it's not. So it is a dairy product. So it would not be dairy free. So if you wanted to go dairy free for that butter chicken recipe, um, I don't even use butter. Sometimes I'll just saute uh, my onions and, and ginger in water and just let it kind of steam a little bit. Then I add my spices and my turmeric bone broth and let the kind of spices bloom. And then I add the coconut, uh, the canned coconut milk and the tomato paste. So good point there. Ha, you're sweet already. That's right, Alex. <laughs> So is it good if you have rheumatoid arthritis? So I'm assuming that this is a bone broth is great for any type of arthritis. So yes, is bone broth the same as chicken bouillon powder? So I'm going to say no, um, I'm not familiar with all the bouillon powders out there, but um, look at the ingredients. Like I mentioned before, um, organic has bone broth, you know, you're getting those minerals, you're getting that collagen. The source is very clean and it's non-GMO, but the the way that it's manufactured is super clean. So again, the, the bones are boiled for 24 hours and it's dried and powdered. So there's no additives. Sometimes, gosh, some bouillons, you know, I remember from way back when I was a kid, you know, there's MSG and some other ingredients there that you don't want to have. So always check the ingredients, make sure you're looking for good sourcing and um, really good clean ingredients uh, on the side. Another question you mentioned, bone broth is good for joints. What if, what if the joint, what are the joint benefits? I recently had surgery on my shoulder and I'm curious to help with recovery. So yes, bone broth is wonderful for joints because it's really good for the reticular fibers. So everything inside that joint and the cartilage. So I think it would be very helpful for your shoulder. If you had surgery, I would definitely um, add some zinc in there because zinc is great for wound healing wherever your wound is. I would definitely take some vitamin C because it's an amazing antioxidant for healing as well and some collagen to help with the shoulder as well. And, you know, you can always use the extra protein as well. Protein is super important for um, wear and tear and repair of your skin and your joints after surgery. So definitely those are all great choices. Um, what's a replacement for bone broth if you're vegetarian? So I did talk about our veggie broth uh, that was in one of the slides and our veggie broth has slightly less protein with four grams but added benefits because you're getting that tremella mushroom, which is fabulous because it's um, the tremella mushroom is a great source of hyaluronic acid. So good for joints. Hyaluronic acid is great for um, binding moisture. So keeping that moisture in the synovial fluid, it's also great for skin, keeping your skin moisturized, but um, the vegetarian, the veggie broth is um, has a great source of L-glutamine, which is great for your gut as well. So chicken versus beef broth is one better or is it simply personal preference? This is a great question. So chicken, it, it is preference. I will say that when you mix chicken broth in water, it mix up, mixes up pretty quickly. You just stir it and it dissolves the beef broth. It'll have more gelatin from the beef and you just have to stir it a little bit longer because of that gelatin. So it's very beneficial. They're both taste amazing. But some people have said before, if they've went from chicken broth to beef broth, oh my God, the beef doesn't stir as well. You just have to give it a little bit more of a stir because you're getting that gelatin. So if you want more gelatin, you definitely want to go with the beef broth because it's very um, nutritious in the gelatin. So you just got to stir it a little bit longer. And again, yes, it is a personal preference as well. For the beef broth, we have our original and we have ginger. And then for the chicken, we have original ginger and then the spicy turmeric, as I mentioned. Yes, the spray is wonderful for the bee propolis. It does help when you have a sore throat for sure. It is so, so great. Um, I love the alcohol-based one because um, it's a little bit stronger, but um, how much bee propolis should you take per day? It, it says on the side of the bottle, but if you're using the tincture, you can use a tincture a few times a day. If you're using the spray, I do four sprays a few times a day as well. Another question. I have problems sleeping. Any advice? Okay. Yes. Oh my gosh. That's a webinar in itself, but, uh, sleeping, it really depends. Um, some people have a hard time falling asleep. Some people have a hard time staying asleep. So that's a, a question I would ask first. 
Um, if you have a hard time falling asleep, sometimes you want to just reset your, your biological clock, try and go to bed earlier. Ideally, we want to go to bed around 10 p.m. Uh, you can try using some melatonin to help you kind of reset your clock. But if it's a problem, if you don't have a problem falling asleep and you have a problem staying asleep and you're waking up through the night, sometimes that's adrenal fatigue. Sometimes that's also um, insulin resistance issues where you're having too much sugar and you have to look at your insulin. Uh, but again, um, there will be webinars on that topic too. So look out for those. Um, and does sunscreen limit your body's ability to produce vitamin D from sunlight exposure? This is a great question. So sunscreen does limit your body's absorption of the vitamin D, right? That's why I mentioned uh, a lot of people are wearing sunscreen year round now um, to prevent premature aging. So it's really important to make sure that you are getting your vitamin D if you're doing that. I just have a couple more questions here. Oh, another question here. Um, they said, what is the best honey to have honey versus maple syrup? So this is a good question. It's come up many times. And you know what, if you're going to make something or you're baking honey is very nutritious. It has minerals in there. Maple syrup has lots of minerals. I'd rather use honey or maple syrup instead of, you know, table sugar. So if you're making a treat or something like that, definitely there are benefits to honey and maple syrup because again, mother nature gets it right human intervention gets it wrong. So honey and maple syrup, they're from nature. So there are good, um, in good, um, benefits to taking it. There's nutrients in there. Whereas something that's man-made like table sugar, maybe not the greatest. So in moderation, I think it's fine. How do you get type three collagen? And that again is from uh, bovine. Yes, you can buy directly from Healthy Planet. That's a great question. And I think that's pretty much a lot of thank yous here. Thank you guys all for the nice comments here. I use the Organica Maca powder in my coffee with the enhanced collagen. Is it okay to use every day? Absolutely. Maca in there is wonderful and the collagen Again, the collagen is flavorless and odorless. So a great way to add that collagen because you're getting a good source of protein. And you know, it's, it's great to add it to your coffee. It's, it's, it's fabulous. You, how long can you take collagen? You can take collagen, like I said, you start uh, losing your collagen, right? As you start to age. So it's great to take daily. I personally take it daily. I take the bone broth daily because as you get older, you're losing and you're not producing as much. And especially with, you know, different injuries, um, wear and tear with arthritis, you wanna make sure you're replacing that daily. Okay, someone wanted me to repeat the method I have um, my father-in-law on for vitamin C and water. So these vitamin C tabs, the instant C tabs, you can see uh, they come in raspberry and in peach mango and they're sugar-free and they're a thousand milligrams of vitamin C and they're a little bit effervescent, which means they fizz up a little bit, not too much. So you just put it in water and you're getting a thousand milligrams of vitamin C. I tell them to put two in, so it's 2000 a day. And you put it in a, a large water bottle and it tastes amazing. Uh, sometimes uh, my kids put it in club soda as a treat instead of a pop. So lots of ways to get it in. But again, you wanna make sure your vitamin C does not have sugar added because you're defeating the purpose. You, you don't want that extra sugar, right? We wanna swap out sugar for healthy stuff. Thanks guys, lots of thank yous. Thanks so much. I hope this was super informative. Uh, how much vitamin C should you take for gout? So I mentioned that vitamin C helps, um, you know, get rid of the uric acid and the uric acid is which um, causes gout flare ups. So, you know, I would just take a good maintenance of vitamin C, um, you know, per day, like a thousand to 2000, if it's just for gout. Um, but if you're having problems with gout, definitely try the gout trend product that Organica has. It's uh, it's, it's fabulous. You can look at the website and uh, get some more information on that. Okay. I think that's it. Oh my gosh. Lots of great thank yous. Thank you guys so much for joining. Um, lots of great questions. And I hope you all um, learned a little bit today and I hope you had some fun. I hope you made you laugh. But uh, again, all the products are 
20% off at Healthy Planet. So thanks, Healthy Planet, for having me. And for the whole month of November, you can shop and save. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night. Bye for now.